If you're like me, OBS Studio's support for InVink encoding and other hardware accelerated encoders was a huge reason why you or I switched to the software in the first place. It's just so incredibly handy to get that incredible performance boost without any real sacrifice. Well, there is a small sacrifice and it's one I've gotten a complaint of from many people who I've suggested use this setup. And that is when you're scrubbing through the footage, when you're, you know, moving your timeline through the footage in a video editor like Adobe Premiere, it's a little bit laggy. It's a little bit chuggy. It, you know, it takes forever to load the next frame and things like that. It's very difficult to edit without transcoding to a new format. Well, if you'd like your footage and editing experience to go from this nonsense to this almost as smooth as butter for how you're going to get out of X264, stay tuned because I think I've finally cracked the code for getting much more smoother playback and timeline scrubbing out of OBS InVink encoding. So let's get started. Useful tech education and gaming nostalgia that won't put you to sleep. Get subscribed and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next guide. This video does assume that you have a general knowledge of OBS Studio, how to set it up, and you're already using, presumably, NVIDIA's InVink encoding for your recordings in the first place. And if you don't, check out my masterclass linked in the video description down below. I'll walk you through everything you need to know about OBS Studio, except for this, and that will get you started. But if you really want to know how to optimize your InVink encoding, I have finally found some good settings. So. Make sure you're set up to advanced output mode. Make sure you're set up to use the NVIDIA encoder. Again, this only specifically applies to the NVIDIA encoder for now. I'm getting an AMD GPU to test that stuff later, but as far as I know, it's not even a problem. So these are the settings that I recommended in my last video, and those are fine, but some of them are left on default. There's actually a few settings that help improve that decode performance in your video editor that are so simple. So. Make sure, you know, just scroll down with me, set up NVIDIA InVink, presumably to MKV or MP4. Keyframe interval needs to be set to two seconds, which is gonna be double your frame rate. That is just important for where it sees the keyframes of the video when it's decoding. You can choose any rate control method that you wish. So this, I've tested this on VBR, CBR, and CQP in full lossless mode at various bit rates, all the way from single digit megabits per second up to 150 megabits per second. It still works. So for example, for my lossless recordings, I have a CQP of zero because I'm a madman. Then under the preset, that needs to be set to Blu-ray. I don't know what it is, but something in the flags of the Blu-ray preset allows it to decode quite a bit smoother. That's one of the key elements is that Blu-ray preset, then your profile needs to be set to high if you're using any sort of high bit rate, 60 FPS or higher resolutions, just set the profile to high. And then go down to where it says B frames. This is super important. Where it says B frames, set that to one, one B frame. Now two is typically better for quality sake and things like that. So if you were live streaming, I wouldn't necessarily set it, suggest setting it to one, but for recording, you're giving a high enough bit rate and enough you know, encode time that is perfectly fine. You see no quality loss and that is super important. You can enable or disable two pass encoding that doesn't affect the decode speed uh, depending on your performance. Sometimes I disable it if I'm choking on some incredible 4K 60 footage, but otherwise it's fine. And pretty much all the other settings are this just left alone. See how I have it set up here on my screen. And that's it. Your, your footage will go from this to this. Now, I personally have a high powerful enough computer that even the chuggy files, you know, I still get reasonable performance out of them, even though it's not amazing. But I even had my buddy over on a Ryzen 1800X confirm that his older OBS files that are just like impossible to scrub through, they now encode way better when encode, or they now read way better and then his editor when encoded with these settings. So it's not just me, this affects hopefully pretty much everyone, and I think I have finally unlocked the secrets to getting NVIDIA InVink encodings from OBS Studio to decode properly in your video editor. So again, keyframe interval 2, preset set to Blu-ray, and B frames set to 1 are my suggested settings for now. Hope you liked the video, hope you found it helpful. If you did, go check out our sponsor TubeBuddy, the best tool for managing your YouTube channel, scheduling uploads from Unlisted so you can share them early to your Patreon or early access supporters, uh, automatically taking videos down if you have giveaways, updating your videos in bulk, 
synchronizing to social media. They have so many features. Just check it out, eposvox.com slash TubeBuddy, and hit the like button, subscribe for more awesome tech content. I'll see you in the next one.